So in our previous video, we talked about why data profiling and we saw how easy it makes for us to perform the exploratory data analysis. With just two or three lines of code, you are able to get a detailed report, which is very standardized. In this video, we're going to take it a stage further. We'll be looking at a different case study. Plus, why you should definitely be watching this video is because we're going to give you a deep dive into a new property introduced by Y Data Profiling, which makes it possible for us to compare different data sets for their descriptive properties. If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. So let's take another data set. I'm taking this data set from Kaggle. It's again a publicly available data set and I'll provide you the link to this data set as well. So this data set talks about different apps that are available on Google Play Store and it uh, kind of captures certain features related to the average ratings and the number of downloads and things like that. Let's explore this a little further using Y data profiling. So pretty much the same thing. We have to read the data using Panda's read CSV method. The data set is called Google Play Store CSV. And we are then using the profile report where we are passing this data frame as the input and giving a title to the report, which will be Play Store data profile. And finally, we are generating an HTML output out of it. Let's just run this. So once again, we'll have to be a little patient while it completes the entire exercise. And then we can interpret the report conveniently. So as you can see, it has completed the export. Let's just refresh this and we see report for Play Store apps. Let's just download this as well. Now let's see what this report talks about. So it talks about this data set having 14 features. It has about 10,800 rows. It has 1,487 missing values, which contributes to about 1% of the overall data. And then it has no duplicate rows, that's 0%. It has two numerical features seven text features and five categorical features. I primarily took this example for this text feature thing, but let's also go through the variables quickly. So you can imagine there's a column which probably is an index column called unnamed zero. It says this has about 10,841 unique entries. 100% entries are distinct because it's, an, it's a serial number or identifier kind of a column. Doesn't make sense to look at the mean and median and other values of this data first. Now let's look at the next column, which is app. And notice this is interesting. We see it's identified as text. So what happens is when a particular feature, which is an object type data in Python, has too many categories, Y data profiling would consider it as text. It would not try to consider it as a pure categorical variable. It will convert it to a text form. So what it's saying is that it has 9,660 values and about 89% distinct values in this data. And it's kind of showing you a word cloud for this. So what is a word cloud? Word cloud is basically a visualization, generally preferred for text data, where you give the font size to the words depending on the frequency. So if a word is more frequently used in your data, that will get a larger font size compared to the words which are rarely used, which will get a very small font size. So just another way to look at this. And it has identified a lot of such columns like text in this particular case, because we have too many entries in the categorical features. So most of the other stuff would be similar to what we saw with the bank data, but let's look at the way missing values would appear here because this data set has missing values. So if I take you to the missing value section, this time you see that not everywhere you have the same count. For example, there are features where maybe a few hundred values are missing. There are features where maybe just a couple of values are missing, but it kind of shows you the count of available or non-null entries. Likewise, we can also go to this matrix visualization and it kind of gives you an idea about where these missing values are mostly present. So for example, look at the rating section, right? So rating section is where you have a lot of missing data looks like. Other places also you may have some missing data, but that's not so strongly present because there were only a couple of values like that. But this column definitely seems to have a lot of missing data. It also does something very interesting, which is a heat map. So this is not a typical correlation heat map. This is basically a nullity correlation heat map. What does it mean? So a nullity correlation again is measured between negative one to one, where one means if one variable has a missing data, the other variable also has missing data. It's a perfect scenario when both the variables are missing together. Minus one means if one variable is missing, the other variable is definitely available. And you could think of anything in between which will be something close to zero. So there is a correlation that it says that exists between content rating and the Android version. And it's a positive rating, so it looks like there is a pattern. There is a relationship between the missing values in the content rating and the Android version. Could be that certain apps are available and their ratings are valid only for certain versions of Android. 
and that's where you have a relationship here. So you might have noticed that content rating had a lot of missing values, but it says there is some pattern that it finds between the missing values here and the Android version. And that's a positive correlation. So it looks like there would be certain apps which are applicable only for certain versions of Android. And that's why you will not have valid ratings for that. Maybe. Now coming back to a very exciting feature that's particularly very helpful in case of competitions is a comparison report. So often what happens in competitions, you are given two data sets. You're given a train data and a test data. And if the train and test data are not in sync, you're never going to be able to create a very effective model. So what we should do in this case is, to begin with, we should first compare, are the train and test data similar or not? Because when we talk about machine learning or predictive modeling, what we are generally doing is that we are using the past data to be able to make predictions for future. And if the past data and the current data or the future data are too different, then obviously your models will not succeed in any case. It is recommended that for competitions you check whether your train and test sets are in sync or not. So in our case, we are continuing with the same bank data that we talked about some time back, and we are splitting it using scikit-learn's train test split into two parts. So we are reserving about 70% of the data for training and 30% of the data for test. We are using a random state so that every time we get the same output for reproducibility and a stratify because it's a classification problem. So let me just run this code and then the fun begins. Now here we'll have to generate separate profile reports for training and for test. So we are using the same profile report class from Y data profiling and passing the train data, giving it a title called train. Then we are taking the test data as input to the profile report and giving it a title called test. Now this is where the train report dot compare test report plays a very important role. So this dot compare method is going to compare the train report with the test report and it will generate a comparison report which we are saving as comparison.html. Let me just run this and I'll show you the output. This is very interesting. It's a feature that got added much later, but it's very handy. Again, it's worth the patience, so we'll just wait for some time to, for it to finish and then we will analyze it. So it looks like it has finished exporting the report. Let's just refresh this and you have a comparison.html available. You can easily download it. All right, so as you can see, this is the comparison report that we got. You have two separate headers for train and test. It's kind of comparing the number of features, the number of records, the proportion of missing data, proportion of duplicate rows, how many numeric features we have, how many categorical or Boolean features we have. At times, you may have issues with the data types, and it's kind of comparing them all. You can look at the alerts also. It will tell you clearly about how different features are behaving. So it's kind of putting a side-by-side -side comparison for everything that we saw. And you can imagine any peculiarity here would cause a lot of trouble at a later stage. Especially if you've participated in any competition, you would know how meaningful it is. You can do a variable level comparison as well. We can click on the variable option and it tells us about the distinct values in train and test. It talks about the distinct proportion, the spread minimum, maximum zeros, and it kind of shows miniature histograms for both the sets. This light blue version that you can see is for the train data and this kind of darker shade here that you see is for the test data. We can always get more details. Even at the quantile level, we can compare different data sets. Now imagine for a feature, if these values differ too much, obviously that feature is going to give you trouble when you make predictions or extend your model to a future data frame. Likewise, we can check the correlations and it gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of the heat maps can compare the missing values if we have any, if we have higher proportion of missing values, and everything here. So we do not necessarily go through everything right now, but you get an idea that you can do a side-by-side -side comparison. It comes up as a very handy tool for anybody, especially because you may not want to waste too much time trying to figure out each variable. Now, while all of this sounds great, let's also discuss some of the limitations of Y data profiling. See, please understand this is all based on the data type. So to begin with, if your variable has not got an appropriate data type. For example, let's say you're dealing with a feature which captures ratings, but the ratings are written in language, which means let's say it's, it goes from extremely dissatisfied to extremely satisfied. Now, obviously it will not be able to on its own figure out that this variable has an order or any sense like that. Similarly, if you have a categorical variable which is already encoded, it will not on its own figure out that it, this should have been a category to begin with. So you may have to work with the data types a little bit and you notice that there could be such variables which have a long tail effect, which means they have too many categories 
So you may want to do all the pre-work in terms of data preparation. So this is not a tool for data preparation. This is a tool for data profiling. You get to know about what your data is like, but if you want to treat your data, you want to treat outliers, missing values, and other stuff, for that, of course, you have to do appropriate treatments. This comes handy in terms of understanding your data quickly. And the best part is that it's all standardized. Hope this helps.